11 and verse 10. That's, I'm going to show you how you get the understanding of the Bible because you don't, you lack the understanding of the scriptures. You don't know your nationality. You are people. That's right. Ooh, you're a yeah. years ago. That's what y'all have to understand, but they call it the dark ages because why? They don't want you to know how great you really are. That's right. I wish I had a camp in my city, but I ain't have time to write. I've been too busy. But this is for the brothers that's online, that, that watches videos all over the world in different cities where there's no camp. You don't wish for a camp, you create the camp. Y'all understand that, brothers? Do y'all get what I'm saying when I when I say that? I, that's one of my biggest pet peeves when people say, I wish I had a camp in my city. All of you brothers are ordained to be prophets. We have the greatest teachers on the face of the earth. Take what they are teaching us and apply it wherever you are at, and there's your camp. Nobody should have to come and, and babysit you to, to, to build something up. There's two ways. When you go, when you do visit, because everybody, you have to go somewhere to learn. Acts 8, read that real quick. Acts 8, 27. you got to go somewhere to learn. But don't go to learn to sit there and be a follower your whole life. Go to learn and take it wherever you at and apply it. Alright, read that. Acts 8, 27. The book of Acts chapter 8, verse 27. Just start at 30. Verse 30. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah mm -hmm. and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? He said, Do you understand what you are reading? Read. And he said, How can I? Except some man should guide me. So we all need guidance in this truth. The beautiful thing about IUIC is we have a million means of communication for brothers and sisters to grow. If you are a new brother, a new sister, and you're in a city where there's nobody at, there's somewhere you can go and there's somebody you can contact to get built up in the scriptures. All right? So, the raising up of a camp. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 7 and 7. All right? Because... This is this this scripture we're about to read is the main reason why we see what we see here today. There's a building, it's getting paid for, we get whatever we need, we get it done. Because we understand in these last days that this is the only solution to our problems. Which is coming back to these scriptures and applying them. Read that. The book of Ecclesiastes in the Bible. Chapter 7, verse 7. Uh-huh. Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad. Surely what? Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad. Right. So if you're looking at the scriptures, we are the only people in Tallahassee and the surrounding areas that understand that we are oppressed. And we found we found the solution. So that's what we're gonna keep these commandments to the best of our abilities. Read. And a gift destroyeth the heart. It says, and a gift destroyeth the heart. What is who can who can explain that? A gift destroyeth the heart. Like how uh, Esau give us EBT and make people feel like it's all good and he ain't no pressure. Like there you go. They give you things to, to, to blind you from the actual things that happen to your own people. The soldier brought it out today. They give you millions of dollars, so on and so forth, and you forget about your people. You think you're good. When in all actuality, yeah, you're good, but you don't look at things from a nation standpoint. The white man looks at things from a nation standpoint. That's why they attack Every movement that has ever come through uh, a black, Hispanic, or Latino movement, why did they try so hard to shut it down? Even though the white man still had uh, Ford, he still had McDonald's, he still had Burger King, he still had every mall, he still had every factory, 
Why does he work so hard to when he see a group of black people doing their own thing? Why? Why, brothers? What you got? Um, because he understands as a nation that um, the end of his nation is the beginning of ours. And there you, you know go. That. He see us growing as a nation and not individuals. They don't like that because the scripture says we are stronger than Esau. So when we are on one accord, like he said, that's the demise of the so-called white man. They cannot prosper without us. They need us. What you have? Oh, no. You you had something, man. You look. Go ahead, go ahead. I was, I was ahead of you. I was uh, cheating off your paper. <laughs> okay, I got you. I got you. <laughs> so, oppression maketh the wise man mad. Oppression maketh the wise man mad. So when you're mad, you find a solution. All right, let's go to First Maccabees chapter one and verse forty-three. Is it three and forty-three? Let's see. Is it, uh, three and forty-three. All right, read that. First Maccabees three and forty-three. The book of Ma First Maccabees chapter three and verse forty-three. Uh huh. They said one to another. Let us restore the decayed estate of our people. So that's what we're doing here today. That's what the raising up a camp is about. When you decide to go out and hit the streets, when you decide to put your monies together, and you know what, hey, let's make this thing for real. Let's get a building. When you, you know what, let's buy a building. You know what, let's, let's buy a van. Let's, let's paint the walls. Let's, let's put a floor down. That, that's, what, that's what you are doing. You are restoring your people. All right, read that again from the top. First Maccabees chapter 3 and verse 43. Uh -huh. They said one to another, let us restore the decayed estate of our people uh -huh. and let us fight for our people and the sanctuary. That's what we're doing today in a spiritual sense. All right, the scripture said this is a spiritual warfare. Everything we do is a war against the so-called white man. That's how he looks at it. The bishop going to bring it out today in class, but we are in spiritual warfare with these nations. All right. Uh, Lamentations 2 and verse 13. Because remember, oppression maketh the wise man mad. You see the state of your people. The next thing a wise man would do is figure out how to restore his people. Because our leaders today are not doing that. And we'll show you that in the scriptures. Read that. The book of Lamentations, chapter 2, and verse 13. Uh -huh. What things shall I take to witness for thee? Mm -hmm. What things shall I liken to thee, O daughter of Jerusalem? Uh -huh. What shall I equal to thee, that I may comfort thee, O virgin daughter of Zion? Uh -huh. For thy breach is great like what? The, for thy breach is great like the sea. Who can heal thee? So the scripture says that our breach is great like a sea. Who can heal thee? Our breach is great. What does it mean when it says our breach is great, brothers? Pastor Mike and Mordecai. Our lineage? No. What's a breach, brothers? I know I got some military men back there. Breach is when you enter into a, like a, you could breach into like a building or something. Just so it's a what? A breach is what? If we've been breached, what does that mean? Um, like our, like we've been hurt, I guess. I don't know. Let's see. I want to see what else. Infiltrated. Right? We've been infiltrated, but it says our breach is great. But that breach is great. We've been robbed and spoiled. Our nation is destroyed. There you go. There you go. There you go. I breach. I breach. Meaning, because remember the scripture says that we were at a decayed estate. We are at a decayed estate, a low estate. We've been brought down. We've been destroyed, as he said. That's the breach. That's the breach. Read verse four, 14. Verse 14. Thy prophets have seen vain and foolish things for because thee. Because our prophets, your leaders, have seen vain and foolish things. Read. And they have not discovered thine iniquity. They what? They have not discovered thine iniquity. That's the main reason why our breach is great. Because we keep getting worse and worse and worse. Because we don't understand that we are in the midst of sin. Like the brother said, they went uh, on the fly mission on Easter. And the sisters look like they're coming out of the club. Because nobody has sat there and told us, hey, you can't wear that. You can't do that. Your hair ain't supposed to look like that. Your dress needs to be this long. 
Brothers, you shouldn't be uh, holding another man's hand going into the church, so on and so forth. <laughs> they, they haven't told him, because guess what? In Christianity, there's no what? There's no laws. It's lawlessness. And if you try to tell somebody something, they're going to look at you like you're crazy. That's why it says they have seen vain and foolish things for them. That's why our breach is great. It's only going to get worse. Keep reading. Verse 14. Thy prophets have seen vain and foolish things for thee, and they have not discovered thine iniquity. Uh -huh. To turn away thy captivity. You see that? They have not discovered thine iniquity. Then on the flip side, to turn away thy captivity. That's the cut to all the camps right there. What is that telling us right there? What's going to turn away our captivity? Come on, brothers. Follow me. Follow me. They're keeping our laws. They're keeping our laws. Getting out of iniquity. Didn't say the name. No, sir. It didn't say that prophets have not discovered thy name and <laughs> delivered thy captivity. It didn't say that. It said the prophets have not discovered thy iniquity. Thine iniquity. The sin, not the name, the sin is what's keeping us in captivity. Do y'all understand that? That's why the white man is at war with the saints. When you read in Romans, that keep the commandments of God. Y'all understand that? Verse 15. No, finish that one. But thy prophets have seen vain and foolish things for thee, and they have not discovered thine iniquity to turn away thy captivity, uh -huh. but have seen for thee false burdens and causes of banishment. What are the false burdens? What are the false burdens that the prophets have seen for us? A false burden. Something that's weighing us down that's false. Oh, believe it on Caesar boy jail. White man, Jesus, good. Y'all should be going in on this one. Everybody know these. Integration in the society. Integration, good. These holidays. Holidays, perfect. Oh, the Sabbath on Sunday. The Sabbath being on Sunday, good. All of our um, the by names that we get. Yep, by words, yeah. proverbs, good. Furthering us away from our true nationality. Tithing for the building of the church. Huh? Tithing. Tithing, yep. Yeah. Yep, good one. Religion. Religion, there you go. Good, 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 good. Those are some good ones, brothers. Those are some great ones. Those are some great ones. All right, read verse 15. Verse 15. All that pass by clap their hands at thee. They hiss and wag their head at the daughter of Jerusalem, uh -huh. saying, Is this the city that men call the perfection of beauty, the joy of the whole earth? So because our pastors and preachers and politicians have not discovered that iniquity, the white man looks at us and laughs now. He's saying, God, talk. these are the, the Israelites? Ain't no way these are the Israelites. It's kind of like when you, um, when I used to watch TV, I don't know why I ain't got cable no more, but when I used to watch the NBA and the finals, they always bring, um, what's the old black dude? Bill Russell. They always uh, bring Bill Russell up to present the trophy. And you look at him, he's shaking, he can barely walk. Ah, there you go, LeBron. There you go, another championship. And you look at him like, is this the man that won 11 championships? Right. He can't even walk. Right. That's how the that's how the nations look at us. They're like, dang, y'all come, y'all King David, Saul, Paul, the prophets, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and now your sisters walk around half naked. Your brothers are homosexuals. Yeah, your, your, your kids don't respect you. Is this the nation? That's how they look at us. But on the flip side, that's why when they see IUIC. They get mad as hell. Because we doing it by the scripture. They like, oh snap. They coming back. The sisters are covered up. The brothers got beards. They know the scriptures. So understand, we're going into uncharted territories. Alright? Read verse uh, 16. Verse 16. All thine enemies have opened their mouth against thee. They hiss and gnash and gnash their teeth. They say, We have swallowed her up. Certainly, this is the day that we looked for, we have found, we have seen it. So, in our current state today, they, this is where they wanted us at. 
But remember, when we're raising up a camp, we understand these scriptures. We understand that the only way we're going to get our people out of this situation, out of this captivity, is to come together on one accord and to build. All right? From there, let's go to Lamentations 4 and 2. The book of Lamentations chapter 4 and verse 2. Uh -huh. The precious sons of Zion, comparable to fine gold, uh -huh. how are they esteemed as earthen pitchers, the work of the hands of the pot? So, somebody explain that one to me. Somebody explain that one to me. And then I'm going to stop asking y'all questions. We're going to get into the scriptures. Explain Lamentations 4 and 2 where it says, The precious sons of Zion comparable to fine gold. What does that mean? Come on, brothers. Don't be, don't be scared. Get the mic. That means we used to be our uh, kings upon the earth, but now we are uh, falling down to like nothing. There you go. There you go. Remember, goes back to Ecclesiastes 7 and 7. Alright, oppression maketh a wise man mad. Because we see what our brothers should be doing. We see where we come from. And we also see where we're supposed to be going. That makes a wise man mad. Why are we doing these things? Alright, let's go to John 3 and verse 3. So now we're going to show you how we get back to that gold status that we're supposed to be at. Alright, so those men and those women in those different cities that are building those camps, these are the things that we are doing to get ourselves back to that gold status. Read that, John the, chapter 3. The book of John chapter 3 and verse 3. Uh -huh. Jesus answered and, and said unto him, Verily, verily I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So except a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Read. Nicodemus saith unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Uh -huh. Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Read, so Nicodemus was being simple. Read. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. All right, somebody give me the precepts. What's the water and the Spirit? Because I know we got some new people. What you got? Ephesians 5 and 26 and uh -huh. John 6, 63. Explain it. We ain't going to go to it. I just want to explain it real quick. Well, the water is the word of God. Uh-huh. And um, John 6, 63 is the spirit. There you go. Which is what? The whole, uh, laws. The word of God the as well. God They're both the same well, thing. Just yeah. different explanations. So, what it's saying is you have to come into these scriptures and be born again. You have to renew your whole life, your whole personality and get it in line with the scriptures. Second Ezra 14 and verse 13. So, you be born again when you rebuild this camp and the first thing you must do, the scriptures give you a specific blueprint and outline of how to build yourself up and how to build your camps up. Read that. Second Ezra chapter 14 and verse 13. Uh -huh. Now therefore, set thine house in order. Do what? Set thine house a, in order. A lot of times, brothers and sisters, we skip over that part. What's the first thing brothers love to do when they come into the truth, brothers? Y'all know. What's the first thing you want to do, brother Jedi? I'll find a wife. <laughs> yeah, that's one thing. But before you even think about finding a wife, a lot of times, what you want to do? Uh, evangelize everybody. There you go. You want to become John the Baptist himself. <laughs> you going everywhere you can go, find anybody you can find. Hey, really, hey, you know you an Israelite, right? You know the white man is the devil. Did you know? Telling everybody this. But the scriptures don't speak about that. It don't say to go about it like that. Read that again. The book of 2nd Andrews chapter 14 and verse 13. Uh -huh. Now therefore set thine house in order. Do what? Set thine house in order. The scriptures say the opposite. It says get your house in order first and foremost. Meaning sit down somewhere and learn. Learn the scriptures. Learn the scripture. We just had another brother lose his job. He had a good job, six figure job, lost his job because he owned a job trying to be John the Baptist. Got counsel from two different places. Hey, brother, don't do that on the job. It ain't worth it. Now he lost his job. Now he need help. Y'all, you gotta apply the scriptures. 
You gotta apply the scriptures. Uh, one of my co-workers is supposed to come today, but it was four years. We were working with each other four years before I said anything to him. They just thought I was the weirdest dude ever. They called me Black Man. I'd be gone whenever a holiday anything pop up. I'm out of there. They know he, he weird. But hey, he, he he gonna do what the Bible say, but they didn't know nothing. I work at a, I work at a radio station doing a sports show uh, down in my hometown of Meridian, Mississippi, and I work with Edomite. That's my co-host, so uh, he's also my boss, but he's my co-host, and um, he do stuff that entice me all the time, man. Yeah, what y'all doing for Easter on air? You know, we on we on live on air. And I was like, well, you know, I'm not traditional in the sense. <laughs> you know, uh, we probably not going to do anything. But I got to be wise as a servant because if I say, did you know that Easter was not in the Bible? Did lose my job. Yeah. So like the scriptures say, you got to be wise as a serpent. Harmless as a dove. Especially when it comes to Esau, because they always watch him. The most I made them to think ten steps ahead. They think ahead of us. He might be setting me up because he want to bring his homeboy in. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, you got to be careful. Got to be careful. Absolutely. Great example. Great example. And I forgot, I ain't even introduced you. This soldier, uh, get a lion. He's, uh, he's um, heading up the camps in Mississippi. Lord willing, they get in school soon. So I ain't get a chance to introduce him. We actually, uh, we go back. Um, we were both slaves on the plantation at uh, Mississippi State. So it was, a, it was a great thing when I saw he came into the truth. So all praise to the most high. Uh, he just came down to visit with us. All right, so read that again, verse 13. Second Andrews chapter 14 and verse 13. Now therefore set thine house in order. And reprove thy people. Uh -huh. Comfort such of them as be in trouble. And now renounce corruption. Right. So this is the heart and soul of the topic. Because the topic is the raising up of a camp. So the first thing you must do before you get that city in order. Before you get your family in order. You must get yourself. Each individual in line. We'll read it again. It says, therefore set thine house in order. And reprove thy people. So you got to know. That everything, when you bring these people into your house, into your school, so on and so forth, guess what? It's going to be in order. The last thing you want is you got all these people and you bringing them somewhere and you're not in order. Brother's going to be like, hey, why your wife ain't never here? Nah, oh, brother, don't worry about that. The scriptures say this. You know, uh, yeah, you got ten, the ten heads and the ten horns. Yeah, that's uh, the UK. No, the, right. Set your houses in order first and foremost. Then renounce corruption. That's when we go to the streets. That's when we go into the community events. We do a fly missions, so on and so forth. But it all comes after you set your house in order. Go to um, 1 Corinthians real quick. Chapter 10. No, 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 to 5. 10 and 6. That's what I want. Oh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 6. Uh -huh. And having in a readiness to be, oh, excuse me, and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So it says, in having a readiness, meaning you ready to, uh, to revenge all all disobedience, meaning your wicked pastors, your mothers, your fathers, your family, so on. It says when your obedience is fulfilled. What's that? What's your obedience being fulfilled? What's that? The keeping of the commandments. You in order. There you go. You now you thinking when you have set your house in order. That's what that's going into. But you can't do it the other way around. Cause let's say you do come into the truth one day. You just got one shirt that's fringed up. You go to the streets. And you bring in 300 people. And then you got your shirt dirty. And the next day you got to teach all these people. They're like, what? You was telling us about fringes? What happened? Right. Where yours at? Right. You got you to gotta wait till your obedience is fulfilled. Meaning you've learned and applied the scriptures. You've been tried in the scriptures. All right? From there, let's go to... Um, first, did we even get to 15? Go back, go back, I'm sorry. Verse 14, 14, 14. Second Ezra 14 and 14. The book of Second Ezra chapter 14 and verse 14. Mm -hmm. Let go from the mortal thoughts Read. and cast away the burdens of man. Uh -huh. Put off now the weak nature Read. and set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee and haste thee to fly or to flee from these times. Right, so you got to put off that weak nature and be born again in the spirit in these scriptures ready to, to, to teach and to build whoever you step in front of your house in order. So we must know what the order is. A lot of times our people, especially our sisters, 
Especially our sisters don't know the order of the household. And you brothers don't know as well because y'all let them get away with it. All right, read that. 1 Corinthians 11 and 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. Uh -huh. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Read. And the head of the woman is the man. Read. And the head of Christ is God. So understand the order of the household. So first you get yourself together, then you get your house in order. You make sure your wife understands her role. You make sure your children understand their role. And you make sure they understand that this is all according to the scriptures. Not what I said. Because that's what the white man likes to plant in our woman's head. That yeah, you know, you ain't, you ain't supposed to be in submission unto your husband. That's, that's uh, male chauvinism. What's the other word? Yeah, your male chauvinism. What's the other word to do? Is that sexist? That's sexist that you are in submission unto your husband. No, it's not sexist. It's not my opinion. It's not male chauvinism. It's God's word. That's what the Bible says. All right? Genesis 3 and 16. So how is this order supposed to be established? Why is it established the way it's established? Read that. The book of Genesis, chapter 3 and verse 16. Uh -huh. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow uh -huh. and thy conception. So sisters, if you, always, if you wanted to know why this pregnancy hurt so bad, this is why. Read it again. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. Uh -huh. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. Read. And thy desire shall be to thy husband. Thy desire, thy desire, thy want should be to your husband. Read. And he shall rule over thee. And he shall what? Rule over thee. And he shall... Uh... Be 50-50 with his wife. Rule over thee. And he shall take counsel from his wife. And he shall rule over thee. Brothers, understand the scripture says you are the ruler of your household. Understand that. Alright? We ain't had that incident in Tally yet. So I know it's going to come though. So I got to weed out any weak brothers. I don't, <laughs> gosh, I don't want that to happen. It's going to be a sad day. Ephesians 5 and 21. On the flip side, just so sisters don't get too mad, Ephesians 5 and 21. The book of Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 21. Uh-huh. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. So, brothers, how do you submit unto your wives? That ain't what the scripture said. <laughs> Um, I know that you're supposed to um, provide like um, food and clothing and shelter for her and um, have sex when she wants to have sex. Okay, those are, those are some good ways. That brother's straight to it. <laughs> <laughs> um, acknowledge that she's the weaker vessel. Okay, that's, that's another one. Acknowledge that she's the weaker vessel. You give an answer, you just got the mic. Are you you're supposed to love her like you love your own self? There you go. There you go. All of those answers were absolutely correct. That is how you are in submission unto your wife. Can you go out and lay with another woman? No. So sisters might not think that's submission. That's submission. That's submitting unto your wife. The fact that you're not you're not doing what you want, doing what you may think is right. Your wife made you mad, so you go sleep with a woman. Absolutely not. That's not in the scriptures. You cannot beat your wife. There's a lot of different things that you can't do, and that's called being in submission unto your wife. You gotta love your wife as you love yourself. You gotta feed her, you gotta protect her. You gotta make sure she has clothing. You gotta make sure she has the things of this world. Uh, give me that first Corinthians real quick, it's seven. In verse uh, 33. The book of first Corinthians chapter seven, verse 33. Uh huh. But he that is married careth for the things that are of the world. But he that is married careth for the things that are of the world. Why? How he may please his wife. How he what? May please his wife. That's another way you got to be in submission unto your wife. You must please your wife. Every once in a while, there's nothing wrong with buying her flowers, taking her out to eat, going on a vacation, so on and so forth. That's you being in, in submission unto your wife. And just in case sisters don't get simple, I went over the scripture last week, but I know sisters don't remember. Jump up to verse 29. Verse 29. Yep. But this I say, brethren, uh -huh. the time is short. 
it remaineth that both they that have wives be as though they had none. Who can explain that for me? That means when you're doing the work for the Most High God, uh, she she have to be on the back burner for a little bit. There you go. There you go. The work of the Most High comes first and foremost. First and foremost. So I might have promised you we was going dinner tonight, but uh, something came up for the truth, and I had to get it done. It is what it is. We'll go out the next day. You ain't going to die. All right. Uh, Sirach, chapter 33. No, 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 I jumped. Scriptures. Ephesians 5, let's go back to Ephesians 5, is verse 22. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 22. Wives, submit yourselves unto your husbands uh -huh. as unto the Lord. Read. For the husband is the head of the wife. The what? The husband is the head of the wife. Now he the hip of the wife. The head of the wife. He's the head of the wife, not the hip. Not the rib, not the, uh, what's something else that's down there? Not the six pack, he is the head. Read. <laughs> Even as Christ is the head of the church, uh -huh. and he is the savior of the body. Read. Therefore, as the church is in subject, is, excuse me, therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Right. So you are both in submission and the wife is in to be in submission unto the husband in all things. And this is going into the raising up of a camp because that family structure is the beginning of you building in that city. Because the most I ain't going to sit nobody when things are out of order. I can guarantee you that. All right. Go to uh, Luke 17 and 20. So now you got your house. You got yourself personally in order. You got your house in order. What's the next step in raising up that camp? Let's see what the scriptures say. The book of Luke chapter 17 and verse 20. Uh -huh. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, uh -huh. he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. So what? The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Who can explain that? I want Brother Jack to explain that. Brother Jack, my bad. You got to put it in work. There you go. There you go. I like it. Short and sweet. So now you got everything in order. It's time to go do the work. Because the kingdom of God would not come with observation. Raise your hand if you went to the uh, to the, to the uh, fundraiser last week we had. Who was all out there? Raise your hand if you went. Let me ask y'all this. Would we have made any sales if we just stood out there and, and never raised our hands and never tried to sell? Would, we, would anything have come? No. You had to, we had to go out there and hustle and get it. That's the same way the kingdom gonna come. We gotta be grinding to bring the kingdom in. Alright, read verse 21. Verse 21. Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there. Uh -huh. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Right. right, so you in the city, it's two brothers. You think you just gonna wake up one day, hey, bro, we got an 80 man camp. All praises. The most I send the laborers in. No. No. You got to go out and do the work. You got to do fly missions. You got to go to camp. You got to put your monies together so you can get camp signs, so you can get speakers, so you can get uh, shirts, get the boots, all that stuff. You got to do it. Ain't nobody else going to do it for you. Bishop, Bishop Nathaniel can't fly to your town and caress your back and build you up. All right, brother, now listen. This is what you need to do now. Now your next step, make sure you go right. Nevertheless, go right again. That's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. You got to build it yourself. Of course, with the guidance of the scriptures. All right, uh, Michael 4 and 10. So we're going into the building up of a camp. We got a house in order. We got the family in order. We got ourselves in order. Now we're doing the work of the most high. We're doing fly missions. We're doing the camp. We're putting up camp videos. We're doing camp one on one. We getting the sisters together. They doing the daughters of Sarah's meet. Read. The book of Micah, chapter 4, verse 10. Uh -huh. Be in pain. Do what? Be in pain. It's going to hurt, brothers. It's going to hurt. You got to be in pain. There's going to be trials and tribulations amongst that body. Read. Be in pain. And labor. And what? And labor. And labor. You got to put in work. 
I say this all the time. If you're not doing nothing, you're not going to get nothing. You reap what you sow. That's simple. Read. Be in pain and labor to bring forth, uh -huh. O daughter of Zion, Read. like a woman in travail. Mm -hmm. For now shalt thou go forth out of the city, mm -hmm. and thou shalt dwell in the field, and thou shalt go even to Babylon. There shalt thou be delivered. There the Lord shall redeem thee from the hand of thine enemies. So, here in Babylon, when we putting in work, when we are uh, working as hard as a woman is when she's trying to give birth, that's when we're going to be delivered. All right, go to Sirach 33 and 17. All praise. Sirach chapter 33 and verse 17. So while we're doing this work, understand, nothing takes precedence over this truth. Nothing at all. Not your job, not your wife, not your children, not your, uh, your friends. Read that. The book of Sirach chapter 33, verse 17. Uh -huh. Consider that I labored not for myself only. That I what? That I labored not for myself only. And a lot of times, brothers and sisters are doing stuff to be for their own benefit. Christ is the ultimate example. You, I know me myself personally. I always go far and above when I'm doing something for somebody else as opposed to myself. And that's that's a blessing and a curse. Because my wife get mad at me because she feel like she's getting shortchanged. She's like, well, why don't you do this when you're doing it for yourself? I don't know. That's just the way I'm built. I, I never want to let somebody else down. That is how we should be in this truth. That, that, that everything you do, you're not doing it for yourself. You're doing it for your brothers, your sisters, and, and for the most high in Christ. Read that again. Sirach chapter 33 verse 17. Uh -huh. Consider that I labor not for myself only, uh -huh. but for all them that seek learning. And this is primarily for you brothers. We labor for all them that seek learning. Because guess what? When you're building yourself up, are you getting all these precepts for yourself? No. It's for when that one magical moment happened. When you was going over your precept sheet over the Gentiles, yep. and then a brother come up. Hey, man, you know the, Gen the Gentiles are going to be saved. And you know the scriptures to explain it to them. That's why you study. It ain't for yourself. It's so you can edify your brothers and your sisters. And ultimately, like uh, the scripture that... Um, Brother Abiel brought out, you can convert a sinner into truth, into righteousness. That's why we study the scriptures. It's not to, to look cool or get YouTube views. No, it's to turn our people into righteous individuals so they can ultimately get the kingdom. Y'all understand that? Yes, sir. All right, keep reading. Verse 18. Hear me, O ye great men of the people. And hearken with your ears, ye rulers of the congregation. You, all of y'all are the rulers of the congregation. He's talking directly to you men. Read. Give not thy son and wife, thy brother and friend, power over thee uh -huh. while thou livest. Read. And give not thy goods to another, lest it repent thee, and thou entreat for the same again. Read. As long as thou livest and has breath in thee, uh -huh. give not thyself over to any. Give not thyself over to any. We went over this last week. Read. For better is it that thy children should seek to thee than that thou shouldest stand to their courtesy. Read. In all thy works, keep to thyself the preeminence. Uh -huh. Leave not a stand, leave not a stain in thine honor. So it says, in all thy works, keep to thyself the preeminence. Meaning, everybody around you should know what you stand for. They already know first and foremost, nah, that ain't gonna work. That ain't he ain't gonna do that. Because that's gonna intervene with this, this, or this. That ain't gonna work. Keep to yourself the preeminence. Nothing is going to take precedent over this truth. Read. At the time when thou shalt end thy days and finish thy life, distribute thine inheritance. All right, from there, let's go to 1 Corinthians 14 and 40. So, this, this scripture right here is the most important, one of the most important aspects of getting your camp in order. All right, 1 Corinthians 14 and 40. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 40. Uh-huh. Let all things be done decently and in order. Let what? Let all things be done decently and in order. So the scripture says, let all things be done decently in order. So most camps, well all camps, is going to start off with everybody's just going to be brothers going forward. Most of us is going to be brothers. And then the most High put the spirit on somebody and he will establish order. Just like 
uh, we don't think about it, but in the Christian church, there's order. You got the, the, the well, they got a million different names. You might have a, the reverend, a minister, the uh, deacons, then you got, uh, I don't know, whatever they call it. They got all these made up names. But. Treasurer. 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 <laughs> Count, counting his money for him. Right. The accountants. <laughs> uh, Secretary. Secretary. Well, they got order. They can have some type of order. Same thing in the body, but we do it by the scripture. You got bishops, deacons, officers, soldiers, brothers. Let's see if that's in the scripture. Go to Titus 1 and 5. Titus chapter 1 and verse 5. The book of Titus, chapter 1 and verse 5. Uh -huh. For this cause left I in Crete, mm -hmm. that thou shouldest set in order. Thou what? The, that thou shouldest set in order. That thou shouldest set in order. Read. The things that are wanting. Uh -huh. And ordain elders in every city, as I had appointed thee. So, the scripture says we are to ordain elders in every city. Now, what does the elder mean? Does that mean everybody's going to be Bishop Nathaniel? No. An uh, elder means a what? A leader. A leader. We are to ordain leaders in every city. That's why, Lord willing, one day we got a camp in Pensacola. We got a camp in Panama. We got a camp in Albany. We got a camp in Thomasville. We got a camp everywhere. That's what the scriptures tell us to do. But we got to make sure everything's taken care of. And then those brothers that are in those cities are able to fulfill these scriptures. Y'all understand that? Until then, you're going to keep driving. Because I hate to set up a camp in Panama and it gets destroyed two months later. Huh? Uh, yeah? Okay. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Hey, um, I just had a question for the brothers. Do you even have to open your mouth to teach someone? What's the way that you can teach someone without even opening your mouth? Jude 8 and 24, um... Lead by example. All praises. All praises. Go to Matthew 5 and 16 real quick. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So like the like the officer was bringing out earlier about the fringes, uh, about the woman dressing modestly, about the daughters dressing modestly. You can be that light for uh, a, another individual. I don't know how many of you go out, you know, with, with your entire family a lot, but when I go out, the first thing they ask us is, wow, your, I ain't never seen your wife wear no jeans. I have never seen your daughters not have those little things fall, hanging from their shirt. What does that mean? You let your light shine before men that they may glorify your head. Oh yeah, we do this because it's in the Bible. God commanded us to do this. Wow, wow, y'all really follow the Bible. You see what I'm saying? So you, you don't even have to open your mouth sometimes to teach someone. That's why I said we labor not for ourselves only, but those that seek learning. They may learn that and go research it. So. Okay. Excellent example. Excellent example. Go to Psalm 75 and verse 6. All right, because it says we are to ordain elders in every city. Now, let's see. Is this a carnal order or this is a godly order? The book of Psalms, chapter 75 and verse 6. Uh -huh. For promotion cometh neither from the east, uh -huh. nor from the west, Read. nor from the south. Uh -huh. But God is the judge. But what? But God is the judge. Read. He put him down one and set it up another. So understand, when the Most High gives you a uh, rank, it's not coming from a carnal state. The Most High God said you're ready to be a soldier, or you're ready to be an officer, or you're ready to be a captain, so on and so forth. That's going to come from God. At the same time, make sure when you see those brothers that are being raised up, that that spirit of hatred don't come on you, because what? who are you really hating? You hate God. That's who you hate, and that's who you have a disagreement with. All right, go to Matthew um, 20 and verse 23. Going into the fact that the Most High God in Christ ultimately are setting everyone up in their positions. The book of Matthew chapter 20 and verse 23. Uh -huh. And he saith unto them, Ye shall drink indeed of my cup, uh -huh. and be baptized with the baptism that I have that I am baptized with. Uh -huh. But to sit on the right hand and on my left, uh -huh. it is not mine to give, Read. but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared of my father. So, just like in the kingdom of heaven, the father controls all positions. Because Christ couldn't tell them whether they're going left or whether they're going right. He said, I don't know. That's of my father. Likewise, on this earth, 
all of, everything that happens is happening because the Most High God is in control. He'll put the spirit on somebody and say, hey, give this brother this test. Or give this brother that test. Or he needs to be this. Or he needs to be that. That's how it works. All right? It's not a carnal thing. So I don't want to ever have a brother come up to me and say, hey, uh, uh, let me get that other soldier's test. <laughs> Yeah, I think I'm ready. I've been examining myself. I'm ready. Let me get that deacon's test. I think I'm ready to be a deacon. I know the precepts. Yes, I got the precept sheet on lock. I've been watching all the bishop classes. Matthew 13 and 17. Hebrews 13 and 17. What did I say, Matthew? Yes, sir. Hebrews 13 and 17. Going into the now, when that leadership gets established, when that leadership gets established, that's going to be a test inside of a small city because all the brothers might be the same, right? Then one brother get the test. That's a test for everyone else. Or if two brothers get raised up, or if everybody get raised, it's still going to be a test because we're going to see if you're going to apply the scripture. Now. Read that. The book of Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17. Uh -huh. Obey them that have the rule over you. Do what? Obey them that have the rule over you. Read. And submit yourselves. For they watch for your souls uh -huh. as they that must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief. Uh -huh. For that is unprofitable for you. So when it says that they may do it with joy and not with grief, what does that mean, brothers? It means you're going to be happy to... Uh you know, show somebody the way of the Most High God. Teach somebody the laws if they have a question or any of that type. Of thing. Okay, okay. What does it mean by not with grief? Oh, you ain't gonna be mad at it. You ain't gonna be like, oh man. But like they come to you, ask you a question again. You gonna be, man? Didn't I tell you the first time? What? The? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, not quite. <laughs> that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for it is unprofitable to you. What does that mean? Go ahead, take a shot. As you're giving orders, you do it happily. You do it without uh, moaning or complaining about what they ask you to do. Okay, and not with grief. It's talking about the leaders. That the leaders, they're going to lead with joy and not with grief. Oh, um, that they, they lead you and that they... Ah, uh, good. That's fine. Take a seat if you don't know. That's fine. Um, do it happily. Like, do it because you want to do it. Because you're supposed to. Okay, and, um, not with grief. Uh, without with grief, meaning um, don't do it because you uh, supposed to do it or uh, dang, God dang, I gotta do it. No, no. <laughs> I'm gonna read it again from the top for the next brother answer. It says, Obey them that have rule over you and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls as they that must give account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief. For that is unprofitable to you. Saying like, they don't have to say what well, they We constantly have to keep talking to this brother and over and over and et cetera. Okay. Y'all, you kind of got it. You got it. You were the closest. Okay. So it says, they may do it with joy, not for grief. i give y'all an example. Uh, officer Enoch. He's an officer, not a soldier. I deal with him. I probably talk to him about eight, ten times throughout the week. All right, we talk all the time. Whenever you tell Officer Enoch, son, he's going to try his hardest to try to get it done. So I can, I can deal with him with joy, as opposed to if every time I told him something, he would buck against it, and then ultimately, we have to put him out of the body, or put him out of that leadership position. That's with grief, because I don't want to, we don't want to, we don't want to take brothers ranks, we don't want to kick brothers out of school, we don't want to do those things, all right, because it says that's unprofitable unto you, because ultimately, you're not getting yourself together. Y'all understand that now? Yes, sir. Do it make sense? Mm -hmm. So read it again uh, for me, soldier. Yes, sir. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17. Obey them that have the rule over you, and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls, uh -huh. as they that must give account, that they may do it with joy. Right. It's a joy to deal with individuals that love to learn and that take counsel. Read. And not with grief. Not the brother that I got to call and tell you ten times, brother, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? You being rebellious. And then I got to kick you out of the school. Read. For that is unprofitable for you. Because that's no profit to you. That's no profit to yourself. All right. Next scripture. Let's go to uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 12. 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 12. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 12. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you uh -huh. and are over you in the Lord uh -huh. and admonish you. Read. 
and to esteem them very highly and in love. What? And to esteem them very highly in love uh -huh. for their works, for their work's sake, and be not peace among yourselves, and be at peace among yourselves. So it says, and we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you. So the scripture's telling you, you're supposed to know the brothers and sisters among you that's putting in work. They are not to be treated the same as everybody else. That's what the scriptures let you know. The brothers and sisters that's putting in bricks, you make sure you know them, and you show you put some uh, respect on their name, cause that's a brother or sister that put in work. That's what the scriptures say. That's not respect of persons. That's what the scriptures tell you to do. Read, read that again. Verse thirteen. Yeah. Verse twelve. Verse twelve. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you. which labor among you. Read. And are over you in the Lord. And are over you in the Lord. Now it's talking about leadership specifically. Read. And admonish you. And they are the ones that correct you. Read. And to esteem them very highly so in your love. leadership, you should esteem them very highly in love. Why? For their work's sake. Because they're putting in works. Because they are doing the work of the Most High God. Read. And be at peace among yourselves. And to be at peace among yourselves. So Rock 7 and 29. And remember, this is going into the building up of a camp. Because a lot of y'all, when y'all walked in, the school was already done. Nobody took the time to think, oh, well, how did this get here? What did it look like before? That's why the scripture says, steam them individuals. Because Bishop was doing this when it wasn't no purple and gold garment. When he didn't have thousands of people following him. Alright? Yep. All right, we're going to end there. We'll finish this uh, sometime soon. Shalom, Israel. I'm Elton Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, Please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.